are here at Sun and Fun. I'm Dan Johnson. I'm going to talk with Steve D this morning from Memphis, who has the newest Pipistrelle Taurus in the country. In fact, he has the end number to prove it. It's not even on the airplane yet. It's that new. He just rescued it out of customs, has got it on site, and uh, ready to put it in the LSA Mall here at Sun and Fun. So, welcome to Sun and Fun. Thank you. A little bit late, delayed by the folks at customs, but better late than never. Glad to be here at last. So. This is an unusual aircraft in the Pipistrel fleet. What we've seen in America so far have been high-winged aircraft, motor gliders perhaps, and some not, but they all look quite a bit different than this one. This is the side-by-side -side, uh, powered motor glider called Taurus or Pipistrel, and it's got kind of a rich history. Can you tell us a little bit about the airplane, Steve? Well, this one is different primarily in that it's a self-launch sailplane as opposed to a touring motor glider. The concept is, rather than take an airplane and gliderize it, they took a high-performance sailplane and motorized it. So it has a 50-horse engine, which is just enough for self-launch capability. And in flight, should you run out of altitude at the end of the day, you can re-extend the engine and motor your way home. It's high-performance sailplane. It glides at a 41 to 1 glide ratio at a very a high speed. Here, at 80 knots, it still does here, better than 30 to 1. One of my favorite people to see right as a result of its full-span flaperons that reflect the negative setting. So the difference in design, design really philosophy really is essentially, this is a sailplane. The other craft are motorized gliders or hybrid aircraft, if you will. Okay, so as people look at this, as the camera looks around at the aircraft, which we'll do uh, while this video is going on, they're not going to see an engine. It's stowed in the back. So we talked about where the engine is. Well, you can hardly see it, but if you notice here, there's an opening in the back end of the fuselage after the cockpit, and an engine is going to pop up out of here, and it's a belt-driven affair with a prop on it. And if the battery's strong enough, Steve is going to try and jack it up for us. Go ahead, Steve. Um, just aircraft, the Super Soul taking off now. There you go. We've got, this is a Rotax 503 engine, puts out 50 horsepower. And as you can see, it's a belt driven, but it's all contained in this nice carbon fiber work. And uh, so the aircraft can uh, retract the engine as well, and that's exactly what you do. You may climb up with it this way, but this is not how the, in how the aircraft is envisioned to fly. This is just a launching tool to get you up to where lifting conditions or ridge lift are good. And then you're going to push the button again, it's going to go down and retract and the doors close on it in a very slick arrangement. And do the gear also retract? disappear on us? Absolutely. Now one of the unique properties of this system is the fully automated centering mechanism. So from the cockpit, essentially, you shut the engine down, flip one more switch, the prop will windmill to vertical and be grabbed by a mechanism in the prop hub itself. And two seconds later, down it goes. So you haven't pushed any more. Have it done. It's all automated system. They have now you're so clean. Once you got a clean aircraft again. Tell me again the glide ratio once you're back in this mode and with the gear up. 41 to 1. 41 to 1. Even more meaningful might be to say that if you're at 5,200 feet, one mile high, you can glide 41 miles. There you go, another way to put it. So it has tremendous reach. Some of the highlights here in the panel uh, include the fact that this cabin is wider than a Cessna 150. Very, very comfortable side-by-side -side seating. The center pedestal arrangement provides for all the soaring instrumentation you would like. Outfitted here in the center of primary nav instrument, the clear nav provides glide calculations for the polar of this glider, waypoint identification, as well as uh, special use airspace warnings. In addition, it's an IGC approved flight data recorder, so that when you have completed your flight, you can download your trace and play it back and view it in 3D or submit it for record claims and so forth. In addition, I have an electronic variometer also made by the same company that produces this, the ClearNav, and it's a dual redundant flight data recorder as well as an extremely instantaneous audio electronic variometer. And I also want to note that while this is the center pedestal, the center pedestal instrument panel, this allows you tremendous leg room in this. In a lot of airplanes, I'm always getting a little uncomfortable after a while, and you can be up for hours in one of these things. 
in this one here, you can cross your legs, you can stick your feet up and down in the air, you can kind of stretch a little bit and move around. It's an exceedingly comfortable airplane. Most sailplanes are tandem, and, and that's because they want to keep them lean and tight and everything. This seems not to suffer from being side by side, but it sure is a lot more user friendly as a definite advantage. Show us around the cockpit a little bit here. I see some. I see a flap control. Well, we know what flaps are. Show us a couple of the things that we don't see, and, and one of those, because we don't often have retractable gear on light sport, is you've got a gear retract mechanism. Absolutely. One of the great advantages of the glider category in light sport is the provision for retractable gear. Oh, this was okay. directly retractable, manual, squeeze and release, raise, and the gear come up. And you're doing it all by your arm muscle. Absolutely How mechanical. How challenging is that? It's not hard at all. Even I can do it. <laughs> so that gives us uh, steerability on the ground via steerable tailwheel so we can taxi just like an aircraft under power. And some sailplanes, uh, they have tip draggers or tip uh, wheels Correct. or something and they kind of they kind of flop back and forth as you're driving around on the ground. This one feels like a tail wheel, a tail dragger airplane. Exactly. Which is correct. exactly what it is. Because the gear is just wide enough that you don't get this wing flop, and so you don't need to worry about Despite it. Despite the long span. What, what is the span of the aircraft? 15 seat? meters, which is about 50 feet. 50 feet span. What's the gliding ratio? 41 to 1. So here's our flap control. It goes anywhere from plus 12 degrees all the way to zero, and then minus five in the reflex position for high speed cruising. Standard equipment for a high-performance sailplane is to have spoilers. And you can see behind you here, uh, the spoiler pops up out of the wing. And for those that haven't used a spoiler, this is an instant lift-killing mechanism that is extremely useful on a long gliding aircraft like this. I've had experience with some American pilots that just aren't used to that kind of thing. and They don't know how to get it down, and indeed, that is a challenge putting this on any kind of normal runway because it'll fly all the way down to the end and you still haven't landed. So you need something like that and that's positioned just at the right place on the wing to really knock out some lift. You can feel it instantly, but you can also dump it instantly. Correct. Unlike a flap, which takes has a certain amount of lag to its effect, the uh, spoiler on is either uh, the spoiler is either on or off. It's just abrupt and it's very handy when you're managing your profile to land. Very very effective for that. Uh, in addition, standard kind of spring interconnect interconnected uh, trim mechanism. Uh, the aircraft is also equipped with a ballistic recovery chute, which is the canister of which is just you after see the, the opening right here where it would pop out. And uh, beyond and, uh, that, one more thing uh, for those that are, the seats you can kind of see by the construction of the cockpit here. The seats don't move. They are really comfortable in that they. Uh, kind of like a lazy boy here. Your your legs are supported all the way out to past your knees, which is very nice for long endurance flying. But suppose we're of different sizes. How do we control that? We can uh, move the rudder pedals in and out. And in fact, during I'm show flight, you my with my hand here. Yeah, Here's the ahead, knob right there. You, okay. And you'll pull them close, and then you can just push them away. And from there come you. the pedals away. Now you have to push them away with your correct. feet so they won't go back. Which just is a nice really thing good. to do in long flights. My longest flight is right around nine hours, and at the time. Getting out of the cockpit, I was just really comfortable, you know, considering I was enclosed in a cockpit for nine hours. When the engine is erected and running, does that charge the batteries and run the electronics of the aircraft? Absolutely. As long as the engine is running, the generator charges both of the batteries. There's you get one two battery batteries. devoted for avionics, one battery devoted to the power plant and its extension system. I see, okay. So that you use them completely separately so that at the end of a long day of flying you'll always have your power plant battery available to extend the engine for start. Okay, that's not drained, being drained down by the running the electronics on the aircraft. Correct. Excellent. But I also see a couple of solar panels back here over my shoulder. And uh, how are they being used in the aircraft, Steve? The solar panels, you can select by a cockpit mounted switch which of the batteries you would like to charge. Ah, okay. Which is how you get to a nine hour duration day for running all the avionics. Okay. on just a battery. Right, because I'm guessing they're fairly small batteries. They're about 10 to 12 ampere hours each. Okay, so having a little bit of solar charging is good. It keeps them topped off real well. Well, let's uh, change topics a little bit here and go, well, okay, 50 foot span, uh, that's not gonna fit in a lot of American hangars, or for that matter, anybody's hangars. Uh, what are your options there? The first option is, as this glider is equipped, it has what we call the wing parting option. Just outboard of the flapper on, the tips are removed. 
to bring it down to 40 feet, okay. which will accommodate will an, an awful hangers, lot of T-hangers. Okay. And then the second option is to, to take the wings off and store them in the ground portable trailer. And that's how you got it here from Memphis, Tennessee, where, you're, where you're based. So. Steve, how many uh, how many of this uh, particular Taurus are flying out in the in the world today? Well, this one's number 126. It's the last one produced, and there are 10 of them here in the United States. Okay, so great. So the rest of them are all over the world. All right, and uh, we want to talk about the cost of this for someone that says, "Wow, I'm impressed with all these things you just described." Tell me uh, a little bit about what the price of it is. Understanding, folks, that this is going to change. Contact the factory for more details. But Steve. Give me in the ballpark here, rough order of magnitude about the cost of this aircraft. This sailplane, as you see it configured today, with all of the options it has, is about 155,000 US. Okay. Count on another 15 or so for the trailer. Okay, so it's a pretty good investment, but if you go out and price motor gliders uh, or self launch sailplanes, whichever you choose to go toward, you're going to find that that price tag is actually not bad at all. Uh, this is at a real price point for this kind of performance. Right, for yeah, for that level of glide and the cleanliness of it all, it's an excellent project. So, well, uh, you know the website of the uh, company, I'm sure, if you'll just deliver that to us. Um, there you go, pipistrell-usa.com. We'll put that up on the screen for folks. you got to still apply some stickers to this brand new airplane here, and we look forward to seeing it in the air. Uh, I have information on many of the Pipistrell airplanes and many other aircraft. You can find all that on bydanjohnson.com or by. DanJohnson.com. Thanks so much for joining Steve D. and myself here at Sonic Fun.